Hello! Hey guys, welcome to my very first Q&A. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome to reintroduce myself. My name is Grace and over the last three years, I have been traveling the world and for the last seven months, I have been traveling all across Southeast Asia and this video is dedicated to answering all of the questions I've ever received traveling around Southeast Asia. But before getting into this video, I did want to give a shout out over to Time Kettle who is sponsoring this video. I just received these M3 ear buds that are an absolute game changer and are must brings for your next international trip. If you've ever had trouble communicating with someone because of a language barrier, these earbuds are the solution to all. They translate words, phrases, and conversations in seconds. And what's also great about these earbuds is that you're able to make calls using the earbuds and you can also listen to music. Here's how they work. You simply connect the earbuds via Bluetooth to your phone. Download the Time Kettle app and once your earbuds are connected to the app, you will see three ways in which you can translate up to 40 languages and 93 accents. The first mode is listening mode. You don't have to do any of the talking, just listen or type out what you want translated. This is really good for conferences or even watching television shows. The next mode is the touch mode. Whether you're face to face or side by side, each person wears one earbud each and speaks in their language. I'd say that this is perfect for dating in case you find someone attractive during your travels but has a really big language barrier. And the last mode is speaker mode. This is where one person will wear the earbud and speak while the other person speaks directly to the phone. Oh my god, hey, how are you? It's been so long, I miss you so much. How's the weather been over there? I heard Korea's getting cold. So the next time you travel somewhere where there's a different primary language than to yours, you definitely need to bring a pair of M3 earbuds with you. And if you're interested in learning more, check out the description below for more details. So whether or not you're planning on traveling to one or all countries within Southeast Asia, here are my most frequently asked questions. And if you want to know the best places to visit in each country, don't forget to stick out till the end. So I have all my questions in these sticky notes. The first and most popular question, <laughs> Are you rich? And how can you afford to travel so much? Okay, I think that there's a misconception between being able to travel a lot and being rich. So to answer, no, I am not rich, but I am very rich in experiences. And so if you're not rich, how do you travel then, right? One of the biggest ways where I have been able to travel has been through credit card points. So whether or not you guys are new to the channel or not, you guys know how obsessed I am with racking up sign up bonuses. If you guys are interested in learning more about that, I have made a video that I will leave in the link in description below. But credit card points and miles has allowed me to travel for free for years. And till this day, I am still looking to continuously sign up for sign up bonuses, which allows me to pay almost zero dollars on flights and hotels. So next question, where in Southeast Asia did you start and why? I flew from New York all the way over to Bangkok, Thailand. And the reason why I chose Thailand was because Thailand was the only country in Southeast Asia that was open during COVID around the time that I went. So I flew in in January 2022 and Thailand was still going through procedures, but there was flexibility in whether or not I was able to go or not. So I went through the Thai pass and I obviously applied for the pass, got accepted, but I had to change my flight and my pass like three times because entry rules were literally changing by the day. And I didn't really know until the week before that I was actually going to Thailand. So that is the reason why I started there. And I am so happy that I started in Bangkok and I do recommend it to everyone because Bangkok is the most visited city in the world. And you'll just meet a lot of other like-minded people and digital nomads and creators. And there's so much to do there. I literally spent a month in Bangkok doing something different every day. And there's still so many places I didn't go to, believe it or not. Okay, next question. How did you know where to stay in each country? So. This is my little cheat cheat, I guess. But before any country or city that I go to, what I usually do is I'll go on Google and I'll type in best things to do in this city. Obviously what shows up are tourist attractions. And so I pinned all of the tourist attraction, the most hot spots in every city. And since I'm alone and for my safety, I just chose a hotel 
within the vicinity. And for me, that is the most perfect way to travel because I'm only steps away from the hottest tourist attractions, my safety was secure, and it was just easy to get around everywhere. There is usually a lot more buses, trains, motorcycle, public transportation options around those areas. And so that's how I chose where to stay. And then obviously when I was hopping around cities, you, I just met a lot of people within the area and they just recommended places for me to go to. And that's pretty much how I planned my trip. Every country, I didn't plan more than a week in advance. Okay, so the next question is, how much did you spend in seven months? So across all the countries, I actually did track my spend every single day on every single item. And so I have spent a total of $10,252.34. And this includes all my transportation, flights, souvenirs, food, accessories, everything. But I am not really a huge spender. And because I wasn't exactly sure how long I was gonna be in Southeast Asia for, I didn't really go shopping a lot. Most of my money actually went on food, but my main goal in Southeast Asia was to take photos. So photography is free and I spent a lot more time creating content and taking photos. I didn't really go out and party and drink a lot, but if I did, each drink will cost you anywhere between five to $10, depending on the country. How much did you pack and why didn't you backpack? Okay, so since my goal was to take photos, I had one entire bag dedicated as a camera backpack. On top of that, I had had another small backpack that I used during the day if I wasn't outside shooting. And then I brought a very big luggage. So before getting to Asia, my luggage weighed about 45 pounds. And by the time I came back, it was over 60 pounds. So that is the main reason why I didn't backpack. It's not like I'm against backpacking or anything, but because I have one entire bag that's dedicated to camera gear, I wouldn't have had a lot of space if I had that bag in a bigger, backpacking backpack. It would have taken up at least like half of my bag and it would have been really, really, really heavy anyways. And I definitely didn't want to break my bag. <laughs> All right, next question. Did you have just one SIM card? No, so I actually bought a SIM card in every country and the SIM cards averaged anywhere between five to 10 or $12. SIM cards were really, really cheap and it depended on the country, but usually I would try to aim to get the one month unlimited, but a lot of countries didn't have that. But thankfully there's Wi-Fi literally everywhere. I didn't really have a hard time finding Wi-Fi besides like in the Philippines, but I ended up buying a SIM card in every country, not at the airport either, just in downtown because obviously at the airport they're more expensive, but I just wanted to see what my best options were. Did you have trouble checking in your drone at the airport? No, I have actually never been stopped or no one has ever taken out my drone to confiscate it at all. Next question, how did you get around? All right, so obviously depending on the city and where you were, I obviously walked everywhere and I was averaging, I wanna say there were so many days I walked 10,000 steps, which is equivalent to about five miles. I think just around seven kilometers. But besides from that, motorbikes, they're my absolute favorite. I rode sleeper buses in Vietnam and they're very, very, very reliant. In Thailand and Malaysia, I use a subway system. The subways are really on point and they're really easy to use. But depending on which country that you are in, you have to make sure that you're just double checking public transportation. But majority of the time, you're gonna be walking a lot or taking a motorbike. Was it difficult communicating with the locals? No, it was actually really, really enjoyable. Although not everyone knew how to speak in English, most people knew how to say hello. But what I do, and I make sure that I do in every single country, again, is to learn the basic languages. So hello, thank you, goodbye, bathroom, and the bill. Those are the five that I always do my best to try to learn. But the one thing I wish I actually had before going over to Southeast Asia were the M3 earbuds. I'm telling you, they are an actual game changer. It would have made my life so much easier just being able to communicate with the locals better. So I'm gonna give you guys an example. Hey guys. 안녕하세요. <laughs> guys, so this is Anna. This is my mom's friend and I'm going to be asking her some questions in English that's gonna be translated with M3 earbuds into Korean. And I'm not the best at speaking in Korean, but she's gonna respond back and I'm gonna know exactly what she says through these translator earbuds. Okay, so first, 
Okay, let me put these earbuds in. Where in Korea are you from? Oh, so. <laughs> when did you come to America? 1995년도에 왔습니다. Hmm. Why did you come to America? 왜 미국에 왔습니까? 결혼해서 왔어요. What do you miss about Korea? 한국에 무엇이 그리워요? 어, 친정 식구들이 한국에 전부 있어요. 그래서 식구들이 그립죠. Oh, that's what I would miss about Korea too. 것 같아요. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to tell me more about your childhood. <laughs> so again guys, if you guys are interested in getting the earbuds, I'm serious, they are a game changer. I will leave that in the link in the description below. So don't forget to check that out. Were you ever put in any uncomfortable situations? Yes. I don't think any girl or boy wants to ever admit it. Although I would say overall, Southeast Asia is really, really, really safe. But yes, I was put in an uncomfortable situation this one time and um, I, all I'm gonna say is thankfully my friends had me on fine friends and I ended up getting out of the situation fine and safe. Other than that, was I scared? Kind of, like a little bit in shock. Thankfully it wasn't for a long time at all. What was your biggest struggle? This was actually something that developed throughout my journey. But the one thing that I did struggle with was not being able to experience certain moments and really cool things with others. So I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really experience loneliness a lot but the times i did feel lonely was really when i couldn't experience a really cool moment with someone else and so when i was in asia i actually met a friend who asked me what my love language was and i told him that it was worth of affirmation and he was like why don't you take it again and i'm like okay and so i took it again and my love language changed completely which really surprised me and it was quality time and it's funny because quality time was one of my lowest love languages, but I think because I've just learned how to love myself by being alone, I really valued sharing moments with other people. Next question. How's it like dating Asian men? So to be quite frank, I didn't really date a lot when I was there. I went on like three dates. <laughs> maybe four if i'm forgetting someone <laughs> sorry <laughs> i just never really cared to prioritize dating i was just really focused on trying to learn how to love myself just be with myself and photography and also because i was just consistently creating content like all day every day i did not have any time to think about boys but have i dated an asian guy there yes the guys there are so so much nicer compared to the guys in america sorry boys where are the best places to visit okay i can make like 10 videos on this but i'm just gonna give you the highlights on the best places that you should visit if you have time in all these countries so the first one i'm gonna start off with is in thailand now, with limited time you gotta visit bangkok phuket chiang mai and krabi cambodia you gotta visit siem reap Phnom Penh, Camp Hot, The Floating Village, and Boker Hill. Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi, Sapa, Ninh Binh, Da Nang, and Hoi An. Next, we've got the Philippines, Manila, Cebu, Bohol, El Nido, and as many islands as we can in Mimaropa. Next, we have Malaysia. Sadly, I only spent two weeks in Malaysia, and I spent it all in Kuala Lumpur, and I absolutely fell in love with Kale City. I think I could have spent at least like a month, month and a half in Kuala Lumpur, but there were so many other places I wanted to go, such as Penang, Ipoh, and also Mount Kinabalu. Malaysia would be the first country that I would want to visit if I ever went back to Southeast Asia because there was just so much rich history and amazing underrated places to go. I personally think Malaysia is like the most underrated country 
in Southeast Asia, but I would definitely start there again. And then lastly, we got Indonesia. Also in Indonesia, I barely spent time there too because I didn't have enough time, but I spent two weeks in Bali. And in Bali, I was in Ubud, Seminyak, Chenggu, and Dampasar. There are a lot of other places that I want to visit, but I definitely would have wanted to visit Nusa Penida and all the neighboring islands as well. And the last question is, why did you come back? I wanted to stay in Asia for as long as my money allowed me to and for as long as I had enough energy. And so the reason why I came back was because I was so burnt from traveling. I really wanted to go to Japan, but I just knew that if I went to Japan, it wouldn't have meant anything because I had just no energy to enjoy my time being there because I was just so burnt. I was carrying my home for the last seven months. I just missed my friends and my family. I was just physically just drained. And so when I came back home, I had to do nothing for an entire month because I needed to rest. And then after that month, it was holidays. And so things have been a little bit slow up until now, actually. And I am recording this in February. So I just started picking things up again this month. But yeah, I would say for about three months, it has just been a whirlwind of just healing and just switching gears because the hardest part was actually adjusting from going, being outside 24 seven traveling to being at home and some days not leaving your house. It actually takes such a huge toll on you. And at first I thought it was just kind of like mind F, but that's the reason why I came back. Overall guys, those are my Q and A's of solo traveling all across Southeast Asia. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope you guys learned something. I hope this video helped you plan your trip better. And obviously if you guys have any more questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram at Grace of Kim. And if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe onto this channel for more travel vlogs like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.